um, coconut milk, rice pudding, I use that in, plus um, your Asian cooking, so for curries, etc. It's always good to have a tin of coconut milk, peeled plum tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, and your passata. So I kind of talked through in my Amatriciana recipe how you can use different kind of things, but generally used for the same thing. Um, it just depends on what kind of texture you like through your sauces. So if you like a smooth sauce, I'd encourage your passata or your peeled plum tomatoes using the technique that I showed you in the recipe where you basically just squeeze it all out and take out the, the white pulpy bits. Um, chopped tomatoes, I put my bolognese, I put my lasagna. If you're going to be cooking something down for a while, um, it really just kind of, the, the, the big chunks can kind of break down whilst you kind of cook out the beef mince, etc. Um, or if you don't mind a kind of textured sauce. Flour and sugar, use sugar in some sauces, hence why I'm putting it in with this section. Hopefully you have it. Plain flour, critical, specifically for like a bechamel, like a white sauce to go at the bottom of your macaroni, your fish pie, a variety of other things. I'm probably going to make a tuna pasta bake. I'm thinking I'm going to use a white sauce as a base. So I go through quite a lot of plain flour because I use it to thicken a lot of sauces. It's also in my casseroles um, and my beef bourguignon. That's my thickener. Um, you can also have corn flour. I have corn flour. Um, but again, I don't tend to use that too much. Asian cooking, yes. Um, I don't use it to thicken sauces. I prefer my plain flour. Um, and then lemons, my favourite. So I always have a jar of lemon juice in the fridge because if I've zested the lemon, I'm going to juice it and that way I can save it for all my cooking. But I go through bags and bags and bags of these because I love lemons. Jonathan says I have a, what is it, a fallacy? Mm -hmm. It's not a fallacy. Sometimes I just overeat her with the lemons. I have ruined a, a dish or two. Cullen skink, for example, before I put the recipe up, the first few batches of Cullen skink I made, well, the first one, ruined with lemon because I put zest in it and it tasted bitter. Ruined. Ruined. <laughs> but other things, it brings things together. So, sharpness. I might do another video actually where we talk about the flavour profiles. So, anyway, we'll take a pause there. I'm going to do a wee bit of a rejig and I'll come back to you. Okay, so heading on to the spices. Essential spices, it can cover a huge, huge array for people. So I've tried to pick out some like key ones that I use over and over again for different things. So I've picked out some kind of ones you can use in baking, but also in savoury cooking. So your cinnamon, nutmeg, you put that in your dauphinois, and ginger, say they're critical. Herb-wise, I would say garlic granules, but again, if you've got fresh stuff, it's not really. It's sometimes if you're wanting to use them in, you know, ones where you're not wanting to cut up fresh garlic, you can use both. But garlic granules, oregano, mixed herbs and bay leaves. These are for stews. On to your Indian cooking, or, you know, like, as I said, um, critical ones. You can, so one thing I was going to talk about with herbs and spices is, see if you don't have every single herb and spice, doesn't matter miss one out, substitute it. It is not going to be the end of the world. I think I spoke to Jonathan about this, right? And if he was recreating a recipe, he'd want to do it the exact same. See if you swap out one, it's not going to make a huge difference. Depending on the spice, but it's not going to make a huge difference. So I'm happy to speak to anybody about that. But critically for like Indian cooking, coriander, garam masala, cumin, and turmeric is the ones I use. Plus your garlic, etc. Cajun, use that in quite a lot, fajitas, quesadillas, um, but I think salmon, Cajun salmon pasta, which is your favourite. Mm -hmm. Paprika and your chilli powder and chilli flakes. So that's what I would say to get if you're being essential. Like I said earlier, go to the world food section, buy them in bags. Ones that you use often and then top them up. All right. Hell of a lot cheaper. So 
So I'm just reusing the little jars. They're like two quid. That's like 90 pence. Going on to like essential food stuff to have in the house. So veggie wise, I'd say carrots, onions, celery. They're your holy trinity, French holy trinity is what I call them. I could use them as a base in a lot of sauces, stews, etc. You can buy them frozen. Um, I think Clean Queen, um, Gerard actually said that you can buy them frozen. So if you fancy having that instead and not having to yeah, just go through a hell of a lot, also an option. Potatoes, I've got Maris Pipers there. I actually have two others outside. But Maris Pipers, really good for like roasties and chips. I like fresh herbs, personally. I always have flat leaf parsley, always on my um, windowsill. Some basil because I'm going to be making some fresh tomato sauce. I've got tomatoes here because I always have tomatoes in my fridge. If you just want to stick to your passat and your tin tomatoes, absolutely fine. Butter, another critical one. We go through this a hell of a lot. You've probably have seen that in my recipes. It makes everything better. De like deepens like recipes, makes things richer, smoother, everything. Salted. Eggs. Self-explanatory. Please always have eggs. Bacon. Use it. Say the stock pot or in addition to it brings a lot of flavour to a lot of dishes. So adding it to your bolognese and pasta dishes, etc. Before I go on to well, I'll go on to dairy. Cheese. <laughs> now, these are not all critical. I just wanted to actually show you. In fact, I'm going to throw them over there just as a... But these are all the cheeses that I generally have in my fridge. This is a critical one, in my opinion. Put in a lot of sauces and generally what's not better topped with parmigiano. Regano. You hate when people do that. Mm -hmm. Just because I went a wee bit Italian there so I just saying parmesan. Grated mozzarella, blue cheese, goat's cheese, soft cheese. That's a really good addition to some sauces. So pasta sauces if you want to be a wee bit healthier. Get the lightest. Um, Philly, that's from Aldi or Lidl I think. Oh. But Aldi. Um, Soft cheese can be a good uh, substitution for cream. I always have cream though in my fridge because Jonathan loves a cream-based pasta. Cream and double cream. So single cream I use for cooking, sauces, double cream for whipping, etc. Stop it with your nasty, nasty faces. Cheddar, nearly missed that. Huge block. This is for like macaroni and whatnot. Milk also makes your white sauces. Um, you can add it to, to soften up. So see when making a cream based pasta, don't heat it up in the microwave because it dries out and it's never, never good the next day. Put it in the hob, add a dash of milk and it just gets it back to what it was when you freshly cooked it. Do not microwave it. Natural yogurt. I use it for coating as a, an initial marinade. I'm interrupted. So I was saying, how dare she interrupt when I'm talking about babs as well? Anyway, you make flatbreads from yogurt and flour. So always handy it's generally got at least a month so sometimes well you'll, you'll generally find use for it i've got this in my fridge just now because i'm using it for pancakes and a variety of other things you can also make buttermilk out of milk and lemon so this is why lemons are critical and that's it just now apart from your pasta so i have many other pastas but i put an assortment so i've got linguine spaghetti rigatoni macaroni penne fusilli etc could encourage you though buy double o flour this and eggs makes pasta. Fresh pasta. Lovely, delicious pasta. And at least the cupboard staples of non-perishables. So they're not non-perishables, but they last a long time. So really handy to have. Halloumi and feta. More cheese. But again, this one, for example, 26th of September, it will last to. 22nd of July. Months and months, right? If you're struggling for something for dinner, hey, inspiration. Also substitutes a protein in my case sometimes, which I think is acceptable. So beyond that, jarred stuff. So anchovies, puttanesca, base for sauces. If you really just want to do a garlic and olive oil pasta, but do a bit of anchovy, adds that little bit of bite of salt, lovely. Capers, exact same, quite salty. Olives, use them in salads, use them in pastas, everything. Eat them by, their, by themselves. At the angle, right, you. Um, so I, ha I generally sometimes have your kalamata, black and... Well, sorry, black. I've got black and green now because Jonathan got me both from Aldi Lidl. Aldi. Aldi. Sun-dried tomatoes, that's what goes in the famous Tuscan chicken pasta. 
Um, really handy to have, chuck them through stuff, just freshen stuff up. You can stick it in your microphone if you want. Charbroiled artichokes and roasted dread peppers. So salads, additions, anything, you can actually make sauces out of that as well. So really handy for adding any pasta dishes, but also you can make a sauce out of it. And I've added nuts because I always have nuts. Mm. <laughs> I'm like a squirrel. Um, always have an assortment. If I had to pick two critically though, I'd probably say pine nut and walnuts. You'll see their new bags, it's because I had to buy more. So um, also got the dry roasted because I put them in Asian cooking, pistachios, sesame seeds and cashews but you can substitute generally quite a lot again you can also make sauces and milks etc out of these if you're a vegan um quite versatile ingredient to have well walnuts i use them a lot pine nuts i use them a lot savory and sweet so and that's really the end of it that was a lot i'm saying that's the end is that oh it's over um let me just double check if there's anything we really need to talk about don't forget um, to brush what what would you say oh. the only other thing i was going to talk about was my knives now i might expand on this later but um people talk about my knife or question and ask and send me messages about my knives my favorite knives are japanese knives so invest look after Get yourself some good sharp knives because it makes dealing with all this a glorious, glorious job. Well, not a job, a pastime, a hobby, an escape. Bye. <laughs>